Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this session. My name is Rogelio Chacon. Before I continue, I would like to make sure everybody's listening to me. <laughs> so can you please uh, use the chat box in order to let me know that everybody's listening to me and you can watch uh, uh, everything correctly? Hello, teachers. Good afternoon. Welcome to this session. Before we start, I would like to know if you can hear me and if you can see me. Please use the chat box in order to let me know if you can hear me and if you can uh, see me. All right. Perfectly, perfectly, yes. Awesome, awesome. Clearly, yes, 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 we can see you and hear you. Yes, we can see. All right, fantastic. So now, uh, let me tell you who I am. My name is Rogelio Chacon. I, I am a Macmillan Education uh, uh, Academic Consultant and I, and I live in Guatemala City, right? And it's gonna be a pleasure sharing some activities today with you that are gonna help you to gather evidence on the student's progress, all right? And not only gathering that information, but also making them improve, which is really important. It's a difficult task today, right, in, in this virtual format. But uh, today we're going to share some ideas that I hope are useful or you find them useful and you can incorporate them into your lessons, all right? So I'm going to start sharing uh, the screen. Just give me a second. All right, good. You should be able to see my screen by now. Just let me deal with this. All right, so we're gonna start then, teachers. We know that um, something that we need to manage when we're teaching is um, motivation, right? Uh, if our students are not motivated, they won't be willing to participate. They're going to say, like, oh, my goodness, I don't want to do that, or I don't want to do these. I don't see the purpose on learning English. That's not useful. I don't want to learn English, right? I speak uh, Spanish or Portuguese or whatever other language, right? And I'm okay with that. But uh, we need to find different ways. To motivate the students. I know that everybody here knows uh, the definition of motivation, but I, I wanted to bring a, a short definition of, of motivation, right? So we can say that motivation is the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. And I want to highlight the last part, for acting or behaving in a particular way, right? Sometimes we complain about how students act or how students behave in the classroom. And it could be because they have different reasons, you know, that motivate, motivate them for behaving like that. And we don't know what those reasons are, okay? What that reason or those reasons are. So part of our job is to find out which reasons are those, okay? So, and how are we going to do it? Through activities. All the activities that we're going to carry out are going to help us identify students' needs. They're going to help us uh, get to know each other better, right? And that's how we're going to do it. Easy. That's a process. By the end of the year, by the end of the month, by the end of the semester, you're going to have the chance to uh, know your student better, your students better, and uh, plan activities that match their needs, right? Good. Now, um, when it comes to motivation, uh, there are many things involved, right? I mean, goals, a vision, 
uh, admiration, support. Uh, the, this comes uh, from the teacher, of course, right? Uh, teamwork, uh, mentoring, uh, performance, and success, right? So, so it is like a process. We need to establish or set a goal in order to uh, succeed in achieving that goal, right? So it is a complete process. So the word motivation, I mean, everybody talks about motivation and yeah, I want to motivate or, or, or there's no motivation in my class, but you know, it's not simple, right? It, it is a, a, a complex a process that we need to understand, all right? Good. So um, before we continue, I would like to know, maybe in the chat box, you can tell me which are some ideas or some ways that you have uh, used in order to motivate your students, all right? I would like to see a couple of ideas here in the chat box, please. Let's see. Um, all right. We don't have any answers yet. Oh, smile, awesome. Yeah, that, that could be a good way. Right, to make report, games and competition. I love this word competition. Okay, smiling, games and competition. Who else? Singing. Ooh, awesome. I love this one because, you know, some teachers that teach teenagers or, yeah, teenagers, they say, no, 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 they, they don't like singing. That's not true. It depends on the teacher. You can make the environment, you can create the correct environment to make them uh, sing, to make them uh, have fun in the classroom by singing or by playing games or by competing. All right, good. So smile, games and competition, and singing. Fantastic. Start the class by telling anecdotes. Good. That's another good idea. And also you are making them practice uh, production, right? I once had a, um, a meme contest. And the winner got extra credit. Icebreakers. Good. I, I mean, teachers, you are very, very uh, creative and you know many, many ways to motivate your students. However, sometimes we run out of ideas, right? Isn't that true? Or sometimes we, we keep on doing the same uh activity yeah it, it was an awesome idea right the, the beams all right good so sometimes we run out of ideas and um uh, and we need to get them from uh someone else and that's what we're gonna do today all right and i hope we enjoy that this time together the first one oh another thing that i want to read to to highlight today is that the activities that we're gonna uh, go over today are activities that you can adapt to whatever English level your students have, all right, which is good. The same activity can be used for beginners, for intermediate, or for advanced uh, students, which is good. I, that, that's one of the things I like the most about these activities, all right? So this is the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we, I continue, before I start. For most activities that I'm about to share, you will need a timer. You can find a timer in your cell phone or there are a lot of pages where you can find timers online. And you can also uh, project them so students are aware of time. Time is essential when teaching, you know, time management. Sometimes we are like, enthusiastically teaching and suddenly we have no more time for practice and we need to start all over again in the next lesson right and that's not a good uh, thing for teachers so but if we are aware of time we're gonna achieve our goals and we're gonna follow the plan as it was established at the beginning of the year right good and the second thing you need since we are not in the classroom is uh a chat tool. It could be the chat box or it could be uh, the WhatsApp thing or whatever groups you have or whatever uh, means of communication you use with your students. All right. But you want to, to be in contact with them while you're teaching. 
When you are in the classroom, I, I will uh, or I would substitute the chat tool for a ball, right? A ball is always useful in the classroom, all right? Awesome. What happens is that instead of telling them, uh, the one that catches the ball is going to participate. I'm going to tell them, okay, the first student who writes uh, whatever answer in the chat box is going to be the one that gets the point or, or the winner, right? Or, or yeah, whatever, whatever activity I'm going to do, right? But that is the, the instruction that I'm going to provide them with. Good. So timer and the chat box. Good. And we're going to start with the first activity now. This is called, I don't see that, but I guess it says the guessing game. What I have here is I have a picture. All right. Of course, I'm not going to tell you what kind of picture is it. Your job as students is to find out what the picture is about. So in this particular opportunity, we're going to ask only yes no questions so this is an activity for beginners right but if you want, you have an intermediate level of class then you can change the, the type of questions they can ask all right good but in this case it's going to be yes no questions and you need to find out if uh if in the picture you have um, animals if you have objects if you have nature if you have people if it is people the age, uh, the activity they're doing, uh, probably the place where they are, everything. I mean, you need to come up with a lot of questions so you can have a picture of the picture in your head, right? So uh, I would like to start reading questions and I will uh, answer them. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to say yes and no, and probably the name of the person who asked. All right, so let's see if you can find out what the picture is. Is it an animal? No, Brenna. Okay, come on, teachers. I need to see more questions. Because is it alive? Oh, yeah, it is alive. Is it a living thing? Yes, it is. Okay. Good. More questions? Is it a plant? No, it isn't. Is it a place? Um, no, no, it isn't. Is it a man? No, it isn't a man. Is it a boy? Mm. <laughs> That's a tricky one. Uh, we have a boy in the picture, yes, but it's not only a boy. Is it a woman? No, no. Is it a family? No. Is it a boy and a girl? No. Is it a superhero? No, it isn't a superhero. It could be more than one people, right? Is it a car? No, no. It is a it is a living thing, and yeah, there is a boy there, but not only a boy. Is it a child? Okay, I'm gonna help you. Yes, they are children. They are children. Okay, are they famous? No, but they will be after after this webinar. <laughs> is it a school? No. Uh, no. Is it a classroom with children? No, they are not in a classroom. Are they at a school? No, they aren't. Also, the activity. You need to guess what, what they're doing. Are they at the park? Probably. I'm going to say yes. It could be the park. Yeah. Are they playing in the backyard? No. Do they use a ball to play? No, they are not playing. They are not playing. No. Are they camping? No. Reading? Oh, no. Fortunately, no, they're not reading. And they're not studying either. either. Studying either. Is it a soccer team? No, no, it isn't. Are they eating? Yes, Brenna, they're eating. 
Now, try to find out what they're eating. So we have a group of children. They are in the park and they are eating. Okay, good. They are eating something healthy. No, I guess it is not healthy. Uh, pizza, no. Candies, no. Hot dogs, <laughs> no. Burgers, it, yeah, it is sweet. Ice cream, Raquel. Awesome. They're eating ice cream. It is a group of kids, and they are in the park eating ice cream, right? Good, fantastic job. You're a great team, great students. Look at that. <laughs> that is the picture. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, good. So that is the picture. We have one, two, three, four, five kids eating ice cream. Okay, awesome. You see, and here you can have different types of, of pictures and, and you can have the students ask different types of questions as well. And you're, you're gonna have a lot of fun. You can also have different pictures for different teams. And then, okay, if you guess what one picture was, you will get, uh, 10 points, for example, or credits, like you said. And then if the other teams uh, uh, guess what the picture is, they also uh, get a point, right? So, fantastic. I love this activity. It's a lot of fun. Good. Another idea here that you can have as, a, as an icebreaker is that you can ask the students to send you a picture of a pair of shoes they have. But at the same time, they need to send you something about the shoes. It's like, for example, if I send you a picture of a pair of sneakers, I'm going to tell you, okay, I'm sending this picture because I love sports. Uh, I love exercise. I exercise every day, you know. And then at the time you project the picture, you tell the students, okay, these uh, sneakers belong to a student who likes exercising for example, and they need to guess whose shoes are those, right? Good, awesome. So what we want them here is to start um, thinking in English because that is, a, that is a, an inconvenience that we have as, as English teachers, right? Students don't want to, to, to produce English. They want to, to create the content in, in Spanish or Portuguese or German right? And then translate it into English. And that's why they are not fluent when they are producing. Mm -hmm. So here they are getting familiar to that ability to think fast. All right. Good. Another thing could be that, I mean, uh, you have a specific order of participation, right? And Juan is going to be first, Maria second, Pedro uh, third. And you tell them, okay, you cannot remain silent for more than five seconds. So when it is your turn, I'm going to start counting. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. And they uh, ask the question. Good. Awesome. Let's move to the next activity. Uh, I don't see what that is. Okay, but here I guess that you, you need to uh, guess the word. Again, this one can be adapted to any English level your students have. What I, what I will do is that I will uh, split the class into two groups, and I will ask each group to send a volunteer. Or, I mean, if I am in the class, to send a volunteer to the front. But if we are um, in remote teaching, I'm going to ask them to select one volunteer each, and I will project a definition of a word. They will have to type in the, the word in the chat box. Only those volunteers are able to type in in the chat box. If someone else types in the correct word, that won't be a valid answer. All right? Good. And we're going to give it a try here. Um, I'm, I'm going to share two things. The first one is the letter that, that the word starts with. And the second one is the definition. All right. 
And I would like to see your answers in the chat box. All right, good. So here we go with the first one. Ready? Starts with A, and it is a word that means good looking or pretty. It is a word that starts with A and means good looking or pretty. Let's see your answers. Amazing. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Starts with A, teacher. Awesome, adorable, good options, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Another one, good looking. Someone that is good looking. Okay, come on teachers. I would like to see more answers. A word that starts with letter A. It's not awesome, attractive. Diego Carlos, fantastic. Attractive is the correct answer. So you got, uh, yeah, five points, extra points, Diego. <laughs> Good job. Okay, next one. Starts with A and it is the opposite of dead. Of course, Armando Flores, oh boys. Good, alive, alive is the correct word. Awesome, that was an easy one, right? Now, this one starts with B, and it is a man who's not married. How do we call a man who's not married? Excellent, Diego Carlos, wow, fantastic. It's a bachelor, good. This one starts with B as well, and it is someone who breaks into houses. Burglar, wow, Diego Carlos, fantastic. That one is the correct answer, okay? That is a burglar. Okay, good, fantastic. I have a couple of more uh, words. Now, this one starts with F. Two weeks is also called A. Uh? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna pass the course. <laughs> Diego's gonna pass the course. All right, good. So, two weeks is also called A. Uh? Starts with F. The name is similar to a popular video game. It's not the same, but similar. Come on, come on teachers. Okay, good, good, Fortnite. That, that's the correct answer. Who was the first? Let me see. Okay, it was Ana Cristina, right? Because of, of spelling. You, you can uh, take into consideration spelling if you want, right? That's also a, a, an option. Now, next one. Starts with F. Light run marks on the skin are called freckles. Oh, Diego Carlos is back. Okay, good. Starts with K, a metal container with a handle, lid and a spout with, is used for boiling water, is called. Okay, good. Diego and Armando, good, a kettle. Fantastic. So that was a competition. And again, this could be a way of teaching new vocabulary, or you can also uh, go over vocabulary that you already taught uh, yesterday or the week before, right? And this is gonna motivate students to, uh, you know, to keep up with the vocabulary, to study every day, because they don't wanna lose uh, the competition or they don't want uh, classmates to tell them, oh my goodness, you didn't answer correctly and we, we lost the game because of you, right? So uh, this is gonna keep them uh, studying and practicing, which is at the end what we want, all right? Good, that is uh, fantastic, that is fantastic. Okay, awesome. 
Let me continue here. And now, I, I love this activity because this has to do with the real world. This is the real world. Here, you're going to invite students to navigate a real uh, uh, web pages, right? In this case, the one that I selected is uh, Disneyland. The one that I selected is Disneyland. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I selected this one because I'm pretty sure that everybody uh, has heard about Disneyland or most people want to visit uh, Mickey Mouse, right? <laughs> I don't know why he's so famous, but everybody wants to go there, right? Good. So what we're going to do is that we need to go to Disneyland page or web page, and I need you to tell me how much is a Disneyland park ticket? All right, a Disneyland park ticket. It's a one day ticket for one person over 10. Okay. And the ticket is going to be for January 4th, 2022. Okay. I'm going to give you a minute and let's see if someone can uh, come up with the correct answer. You need to tell me how much is a, is a one day ticket for one person over 10 years for January 4th at Disneyland Park. Yeah, but, but how much is it, uh, Digna? Mm, okay, Armando says 104. No. No, you need to go to the web page, Brenna. Go to the web page, teachers. You need to investigate this, that that is the purpose. So here I want students to get familiar with those web pages, right? And of course, they're going to be in contact with different words, with different structures, with real English, right? That that is the objective of this activity. Okay, good. We have 30 more seconds. Let's see if someone is able to tell me the correct answer. Make sure it is Disneyland Park. All right. Douglas Lopez, $159. That answer is correct. Congratulations, Douglas. Oh my goodness, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Good job, uh, Pamela. Good job, right? Yeah, but, but the correct answer for that particular day and all the characteristics that you can see on the screen is $159. Uh, Great job. I don't remember your name. Douglas. Okay. Great job. Fantastic. So you can see here you can select different options. Okay. That, that, that is why it is important to get to know your students. You can ask them to find the prize uh, to go to a concert to buy a a ticket for a concert or to a NBA game, right? Or I don't know, whatever activity that, that is going to make them go through a web page, get in contact with all that English, you know, that you want them to get to know. And after that, of course, they're going to share experiences. Okay. Douglas, can you tell us how was your experience trying to find out the price? Oh, yeah, it was awesome at the beginning. It was difficult because I didn't understand how the page worked, you know, and things like that. And then, uh, Mariana, tell me, tell me about your experience, you know. Or you can send them to, uh, to rooms, right, and have them uh, discuss that in, in groups of two, three, or four the most. And then you can also join the groups to supervise 
and to correct any mistakes, to answer any questions. Hey, you know, while I was navigating the, the page, I, I, I found this word, teacher. Can you tell me what the meaning of that word is, right? I, I don't know if, if, if you're familiar with that, but at Disneyland, uh, they sell a ticket that is called the hopper, right? Oh, so teacher, can you tell me what the hopper is? Ah, uh, oh, yeah, it means that you can move from one park to another one, right? Oh, okay, good, fantastic. So as you can see, these are um, expressions and vocabulary that you won't find probably in a book, but, but you're going to find in real life, right? And that, I, I really, really love and enjoy uh, doing this with the students, all right? Good. Fantastic. Let's continue. Now, this one. Now, this one, I know that you have done this before, but uh, I want to show you that it can be adapted to different levels. For example, this one is for beginners. And the way I do it is this. Again, I create two teams because, like someone said at the beginning, competition is something... Uh, Competition is something that will keep your students motivated, right? And, okay, hold on. Here it is. Okay. And I'm going to ask them, okay, in order to get one of the spots, you need to talk about the topic that is in it for, depending on the level, for 10 seconds for 20 seconds, for 25 seconds, for 30 seconds, up to one minute the most, all right? If you're able to do it, then you will get the spot. Okay, teacher, wonderful. I would like to, to talk about money. Okay, go ahead, talk about money. You need to do it for uh, 30 seconds. Okay, after the 30 seconds have uh, passed, you tell them, okay, great job. So you got the spot. Now is the other uh, team's turn. What do you want to talk about? Okay, I'm going to tell you if celebrities earn too much money. Okay, go ahead. You have 30 seconds to talk about it. All right, good. And after those 30 seconds, if they did it correctly, they will get the center. Okay, and so on until someone uh, wins. Okay, some of the topics, which are also ideas that you can get, are beauty, family, arriving late to, um, I mean, arriving late to meet friends is rude. <laughs> the answers you will get here are amazing. You won't believe the answers. Uh, video games contribute to youth violence, money. I prefer uh, my uh, people who are rich but not intelligent or poor and intelligent. Uh, hobbies. Uh, or making mistakes in English is okay as long as people understand what you want to say. Those are some uh, uh, topics that you can bring to your class. All right. Now, what else can you do to increase the challenge? What I do is that, okay, you need to speak for 30 seconds, but in those 30 seconds, I don't want you to make more, more than two grammar mistakes. If you make it to speak uh, for 30 seconds, but you make three grammar mistakes, then you won't get the spot, okay? Or pronunciation mistakes, depending on the emphasis that you want to give to your class or depending on the emphasis that you want to give to the activity, okay? Okay, uh, when you were talking about money, you said money instead of money. All right, so you won't get uh, uh, the, the, the spot, all right? So that is if you want to increase the challenge and, and they love it, you know? And of course, the other team is, uh, I mean, the other team members are going to be the judges. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. I mean, they're going to be very attentive, trying to find a lot of mistakes when the other person is talking. And here I have another example. And as you can see, the, the questions here are different. Right, so this one could be for more advanced students. What is something that is popular now that annoys you? Or what do you do to get rid of stress? What is your favorite way to spend time? What are you best at? 
What is the most beautiful place you have been to? When was the last time you worked incredibly hard? Or how many apps do you have in your phone? Oh, that was, that's a good one, right? Okay, let's see in the chat box. How many apps do you have on your phone, teachers? Let's see. Let's see if you're very, very like into technology. How many apps do you have on your phone, teachers? Let's see the answers. In the meantime, I'll keep on reading the questions. What is your favorite dessert and why? And what is your favorite member and uh, why? So this is another version of it. I mean, as you can see, if these questions are going to uh, challenge the students a little bit more. Plus, if you want to add the other thing that, okay, I don't want you to make more than two grammar mistakes and I don't want you to make more than one or two or three pronunciation mistakes. Okay, that, that's gonna be a, a hard thing for the students to, to do, right? Okay, good. So I don't, I don't see any answers. More than 40, I guess, Armando. Okay, good, more than 40 apps on your phone. Good, thank you. Like 50, maybe, Brenna Woods, all right? 40 or 50, okay, fantastic. Someone else, 100. Oh my goodness, a lot of apps. Okay, 40, 50, and 100, okay, good. Thank you, thank you for participating, teachers. All right, good, so as you can see, here, you're not only motivating your students, you're also uh, getting to know them, and um, you're also evaluating and correcting at the same time some um, mistakes that they make when they are producing uh, English, right? And at the same time, you are inviting them to speak on the spot, right? It's like, that's the way we do it in, in everyday conversation, right? What happens when they are writing or what, what happens when they are taking a test is that they have a lot of time to think the answer over and over and over and make sure they, they are providing you with the correct answer. But with this type of activities, they will get used to think fast. I mean, to, to, to speak naturally, right? Good. Let's see what else we have here now. But of course, we also want to keep evidence of what they are able to do. And in order to do so, we need to uh, use technology. We need some tools. And I'm gonna share like four of them here that are gonna help you to assess different linguistic skills, okay? I'm gonna start with this one, which I'm, Pretty sure that you are familiar with that one. It, the name of it is paperrader.com. And what happens here is that students would be able to, uh, okay, hold on. I can't. Click on it. Hold on. Okay. What happens here is that uh, your students will be able to, um, to write an essay or a paragraph, right? Or, or whatever you ask them to do and the page is going to help them improve. I'm going to show you how it works. I don't know why it is not working. Okay, there you go. Mm. Okay, this is not working anymore. So I go to paperradar.com. That's easier. And use now free. You click here. And... Uh, and then you can start writing here whatever uh, you want, okay? Uh, 
let's say uh, ELT. I'm gonna copy paste something so you can see how it works. I'm gonna copy paste this, for example, and then I go back to my essay. And then this is what I uh, wrote. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, I say that this one, uh, this was a ninth grade student. And this is gonna be an essay. Where is that option here? And I'm gonna skip this, right? And I have already agreed to the terms of service and get report. You click on get report. Now the submission is being processed. Of course, you need to wait a little bit for the answer, for the score. And after that, it's gonna tell you uh, everything about these aspects that you can see here to your right. And this is gonna help your students improve their uh, writing skills, all right? Spelling, it says no spelling errors found. Okay, thanks God. Grammar, it says no grammar errors detected. Let's see, word choice uh, uses. I'm sorry, but this feedback is only okay. This is only for longer submissions, but this is good because what happens is that it gives you uh, suggestions on how to improve these aspects, right? Uh, vocabulary words. Look. Mm -hmm. It was an outstanding job, of course, because there are only two lines. But here, you can get feedback and you can improve. You can get used to your common mistakes and correct them for next time, right? And after you have mastered this paper reader, I know that all of you have heard of Grammarly then Grammarly is going to help you identify some grammar, some mistakes when writing, but they're not going to give you feedback. You need to understand what the mistake is. And that's why my advice is to start using Paper Raider at the beginning. And once they have kind of mastered the ability, they can go to Grammarly. Okay, and this is going to help the students. And this is going to help you uh, have evidence of what their writing level is, all right? Good, so that is a good uh, option here. Now, uh, what is the other one? This one, train your accent. This one is for reading skills. And what happens here is that you're gonna find uh, some, some readings, right these apartment rentals or cooking breakfast clothing dental care driver's education exercise let's click on exercise okay and you will have the audio have the audio this is going to be the first uh, step it says Listen and practice, stay in fit and getting sufficient exercise or keys to a healthy lifestyle, right? And then you have some questions to evaluate um, comprehend, comprehension, but you also have that transcription. So here you're practicing with listening skills because you have a comp uh, listening comprehension activity, but you also have the chance to Read at the same time you're listening to the audio, right? But not only this, you also have this reduced speech for the students to get familiar with the joining of the words and with the usage of the schwa sound, which is a little bit difficult, you know, especially if you're a, a non-native speaker. So here, they are telling you where to use the schwa and how to join to join words like right here in my in my favorite and my routine, right? Instead of saying and my routine, right? They go like in my routine. Okay, good. So let me see if I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to listen to hear it.
Okay, good. So that is the idea. And believe me, these uh, exercises help the students to improve their listening skills and especially reading skills. And of course, also speaking, right? Because everything is connected, you know. I mean, it's, it's like you cannot only improve uh, on one particular skill, but I mean, you need to work them uh, together. Okay, good. Now, Voki, this is my favorite one. Even when it is like a, an app for children, I'm pretty sure that, that uh, teenagers and probably adults will, uh, will like it as well. I just have a question before, before I continue. And it is if, uh, if you were able to listen to the audio that I played. I just want to know if you were able to listen to the audio, please, teachers. No? Oops. Okay. Hold on. Give me a sec. I'm going to fix this. Okay, good. Now, now you're going to be able to hear it. Now, Voki, we're going to take a look at Voki. And, and, and this is a free app. You only need to create your account. Here I am, I am here in my account. I'm gonna click on create because I have created uh, three different avatars. And I'm gonna show you how it works. Listen to this. Teachers, this is another a resource that I wanted to share with you. Here, students can create their own avatar. They can uh, customize it and they can practice listening skills. They can also record um, their voices and then send those recordings to the teacher. So it is very engaging and it motivates students to uh, be part of the learning process. I hope you like it. Okay, good. So here what I did is that I recorded my voice. And what you can do here is to assign homework. Okay, guys, I need you to send me uh, a video in which uh, you will be talking about your favorite sport, your favorite activity or your hobbies, or I want you to talk about your family, or I need you to tell me, look, listen to this one. This one is interesting. I need you to tell me how to, for example, how to polish your shoes, how to prepare a healthy breakfast, or I need you to tell me how to some, I need you to tell me some self-defense techniques, you know? But, but the point here is that you want them to record their voices and send them to you. And, and then after that, you can share those videos with the class. Another option that I like a lot, and this is also going to help them improve their writing skills, is this one. What I did with this one is that I wrote the text, and after that, I just selected the voice that I wanted the avatar, the avatar to have, and the accent, because I was able to select a British, Australian, American accent, or a different type of types of English, right? Listen. Good afternoon. I love this app where students can create their own avatar. They can record their own voices or type in a text for the avatar to speak out. I invite you to navigate through the app and make your lessons even funnier than they already are. Okay, good. So this is uh, what it looks like when you type in the text and then you only select uh, the voice from a bank of voices that, that you, you will find in the app. And finally, I can also be a, a dog. Look at that one. Okay, teachers. Do you think your students would enjoy using this app? I love the bulldog. Okay. So in the chat box, do you think your students will enjoy using this app?
Okay, good, good, good. Fantastic. And then I have a last one, the last one to share uh, with you, which is this one. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's pretty, uh, I mean, the usage that I give it, that I give to it is similar to the one I give to Voki, but this one is more for adults or teenagers, right? So what I do is that I send them homework through the app with a video. Look at the video. This is the teacher. Good morning, guys. Today's task is to record a video. In the video, I need you to talk about your favorite teacher for 15 seconds. So please go ahead, record your video, talk about your favorite teacher, and upload it. Good luck. All right, good. So this, this is what I send them. And then they will be able to post their homework in the same, uh, I don't remember what this is called, but the same wall, let's say the same wall, right? And this is the student's answer. Look at that. My favorite teacher is my English teacher. Her name is Natalie. And I really love, really enjoy every single class with her. She's always helping me improve my pronunciation, my grammar, and every single skill. So I am learning a lot with her, and that's why she is my favorite teacher. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic teacher. Okay. So it seems that we have no more time we have run out of time uh, i guess that we have like one minute left or 30 seconds if you have a question or something to ask go ahead it is one minute one minute left <laughs> teachers it was my pleasure i hope that you can use uh, these activities in your classes all right and i'm pretty sure that you will see your students improve a lot all right so um Okay, thank you, Raquel, thank you. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Good, good, good. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna share this with you. This is my email address in case you can contact, you wanna contact me or send me a video when you are carrying out the activities. All right, fantastic teachers. It was a pleasure. Have a nice weekend, okay? Goodbye.